Hey guys, we're back with video nine, the hybrid crosses. And I hope that you remember from the mono hybrid crosses we talked about yesterday how to do these. All right, when we talk about die hybrid crosses, die hybrid means, die means two, die hybrid means a two trait cross. So you're gonna deal, be dealing with either like color and height, shape or size, something to that effect. Now, one thing I do want you to realize, I, I love this little diagram here. What really goes on this side of the Punnett square are gametes, female or male or female gametes, are on the sides. Now, if you'll notice, there's a di different amount of squares. Yesterday in the monohybrid cross, we had four. Now we have 16 squares. But now, I just want to give you a pictorial representation. So really what goes over on each side, sperm on this side, eggs on this side. So if this sperm were to join with this egg, that would create a baby right here and so forth and so on. So that's basically what is being shown in these uh, Punnett squares. So now let's go through the process of how to figure it out. Now, the easiest way to do it is give me an example. So I've got big T is tall, little t is short. That's one trait, height. Uh, and then big G is green and little g is yellow. That's another trait, color. So here's the type of question I would ask you on the test. Cross a heterozygous tall, homozygous green plant with a heterozygous tall, heterozygous green plant. Don't get freaked out. It's not that difficult. We just look at it like we did yesterday. Yesterday you got a term such as heterozygous tall. Now if I ask you to write what that is, heterozygous, remember, means different. So it's going to be big T, little t. Homozygous green, homo means the same, and green is a big G. So it's going to be big G, big G. That's parent number one. And we're going to cross that parent with a heterozygous tall, so if it's tall, it's a big T. Heterozygous means it has one big and one little. Heterozygous green means it has a big G and a little g. So these are the two parents we're crossing. Now, if we want to do a 16-square Punnett square, I'll draw my square down here on the, on the bottom. We're doing a 16-square Punnett square because a dihybrid cross. You've got to figure out what goes over each one of these boxes. So for our purposes, it put this guy down here on this side. Now think about it. If these are really gametes on this side, within a gamete, it can have only one of these, so either this T or this T, and one of these Gs. So what's well, got to be in each one. Now I like drawing lines. So I can put this big T with this big G, so that's one possibility. Or I can put that big T with that big G. Now, that big T can't go with anything else because it can't go with another T because then you would have some, some mess up. This little T can go with this big G. Or this little T can go with this big G. So there's my four possible gametes now. So, you know, if we had them a sperm, you know, boom, 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 boom. You get the idea. Now, the other one, let's put the other one on the other side. You could do what's called the full method first outer, inner, last. I don't like using the terms because first actually means the first of each letter. It'd be a big T and a big G. Outer means the outside to, the big T and the little G. Inner means the inside to, little T, big G. And last means the last of each letter, little T, big G. You basically end up with the same way I do it, but if I do first and last a lot of times, I'll put two T's and two G's and that's totally wrong. All right, well, once we get to this point, we've got it halfway done. So all we do now is pull letters together. So let's see what would be in this box. If this sperm and this egg here united, these two united in this square, bring down a T, bring over a T. I like putting letters together. So that individual is going to be tall, and it's going to be big G, big G. So it's going to be tall, right, tall, and green. Do the next square. It's going to be big T. Big T, and I like putting the big letter first, so it'll be big G, little g, tall and green. The next square is going to be a big T and a little t. It's also going to be tall, big G, big G, tall and green. The next square is going to be big T, little t, big G, big G, tall and green. Now, think about what you think would be in this square. Pull this all the way down, this all the way over, so it would be big T, big T, big G, big G. This one would be big T, big T, big G, little g. It's going to be the same thing because you got the same thing going across again, right? All the way in. I fill them all in. Now, this one would be big T, little t, right? Get a little t from there. 
big G, big G, get it from there, big T, little t, big G, little g, this one will be little t, little t, big G, big G, this one will be little t, little t, big G, big G, and of course this line is going to be exactly the same. Now, once we get to this point, we're almost done. I would ask you what's called the phenotypic ratio. Phenotype, remember what it looks like, what you see. All right, so then I just go through, and I'm either going to have, there's four possibilities. There's either going to be a tall green plant, a tall yellow plant, a short green plant, or a short yellow plant. These are only four possibilities. So let's count them up. Tall and green, I like putting lines on them. So tall and green, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve are tall and green. Twelve out of sixteen, which equals up to be 75%. Tall and yellow, there's actually none. Short and green, there's one, two, three, four that are short and green. Short and yellow is none. Now, if I add all these up, I should equal all of them 16 out of 16. So, 75% of the time, I'm going to get a tall green. And 25% of the time, I'm going to get a short green. So, this is basically how you do a dihybrid cross. Now, let's clear it and see if we got the right answers. And there, we did get the right answer, phenotypic ratio. So we're good to go. Let's try another one. Now you might want to pause it at this point and see if you can get the, get the question or get the answer. But I'm going to show you the parents and I'm going to show you how to set up on the punt square, but I'm not going to work it out. So you can pause it right now. Okay. Let's look first to see the parents. Homozygous short would be little t, little t. Homozygous yellow would be little g, little g. That's one parent. The next parent is heterozygous tall. Tall is big T. Heterozygous means one of each. And homozygous yellow. Little g, little g. There's your two parents. Now you do your Punnett square. Right? Your Punnett square. This one would be little t. You're all right. This one would be little t, little g. Little t, little g. Little t, little g, and little t, little g. Now this one would be big t, little g, big t, little g, little t, little g, and little t, little g. All right. Okay, the next one here, you might want to pause and see if you can find. This is the most famous one there is. Uh, it's crossing a heterozygous tall, heterozygous green with a heterozygous tall, heterozygous green plant. Uh, you might want to pause, and I'll write down the parents for you. Okay, the parents are heterozygous tall is big T, little t. Heterozygous green is big G, little g. And I'm going to cross that with exactly the same type, heterozygous green, heterozygous tall. Now if I drew my Punnett square, if I draw my Punnett square, you're going to put one on one side, so big T, big G, big T, little g, little T, big G, little T, little g, and it's going to be the same thing on this side because it's the same type of organism. All right? Make sure you don't have two letters that are the same, like two T's or two G's. Remember, that's not possible. When I work out the punt square, I'm going to end up having nine that are tall and green, three that are tall and yellow, three that are short and green, and one that is short and yellow. Now this makes sense to us because we should have the least amount where it has both recessive alleles and the most where it has a dominant allele. All right, and this kind of shows you the picture. You can see you've got, in here you've got nine, if you count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine that are round and yellow, which are both dominant traits. 
you have one, two, three, that is round and green. You have one, two, three, that is wrinkled in yellow, and then you have one that is the two recessives. And here's one more example showing you with guinea pigs. Now, I hope this helps you with dye hybrid crosses. Uh, if not, please don't hesitate to ask me. Uh, and I hope all of you guys have a wonderful day.